This episode of the Practical Pilot series is Don't Fear the Flight Review. Words that strike terror into some pilots' hearts, and it shouldn't. A flight review is actually a great opportunity for you to show your skills as well as to learn some new skills. So let's talk about what is a flight review? What is it for? Why do we do it? It's a chance for the system, the FAA instructors, to check in with pilots to make sure their skills are still intact, their training is sound, and also to answer any questions that might have arisen during the previous year or two of flying. It's a chance for you to have a new training experience, perhaps with a new instructor. So the flight review you could think of is the airworthiness for pilots, just as we have airworthiness for aircraft and we do an annual inspection. We have the flight review every two years with pilots. And there are three ways that we have to accomplish that, that you are current and safe. There's the flight review, working with a flight instructor for a period of ground training as well as flight training. You can earn a new certificate, which is a lot more effort, of course, but can be more rewarding. Perhaps an instrument rating, multi-engine, commercial, all of those count as a flight review. You've shown the system that you've accomplished certain skills and safety as a pilot. And the third method is the WINGS program from the FAA, faasafety.gov. An online course, you can take many different topical sessions, teach you about areas of interest that are also then coupled with going to the airport, flying with a flight instructor. All three of those accomplish the same thing. You're demonstrating your proficiency and safety as a pilot to the flight instructor, making sure that you're safe and that the system is safe. The important thing to remember about the flight review is it's not a test. You come to the instructor and oftentimes there's that, well, please, oh, please, oh, please, make sure I pass. It's not a test. You can't fail. There are two outcomes of a flight review. Outcome one is you've passed the flight test and plus the endorsement, you get an endorsement for having successfully um, flown the flight review, done everything correctly. The other outcome is we log some training. You didn't do things, certain things needed to have additional work, and we're going to fly together some more. Both of those are perfectly good outcomes. One of them says, you're proficient, you fly, you're safe, good, come back in two years. The other says, we have some more things to work on, which is also a good thing for you to have discovered as well. So it's not a test. It's an opportunity to demonstrate your skills and learn some new skills. What you will never get is an endorsement that says, on this date, this pilot failed a flight review. Those don't exist, and if they do, it's your flight instructor who needs the flight review. That's not how this works. As you're setting up your plan with your flight instructor for your flight review, you might take an opportunity to have some new type of flying experience. Go get checked out in a new aircraft. Get into a high performance or a complex airplane. Go do a tailwheel endorsement. Go do a mountain checkout if you're in that sort of a terrain or environment. Fly with an instructor, you're going to get some dual training logged. Go get two birds with one stone. Conduct and complete the flight review, get the endorsement for that, and then do something else at the same time. That way you're being more efficient with your training dollars and you get to fly more often. A good flight review starts when you make an appointment with your instructor. Talk with the instructor, give them a little bit of lead time. Don't say, I gotta go flying tomorrow and I'm out of currency, I gotta have a flight review. Give them some time. But plan what you'd like to talk about, what you'd like to go over during the review. As an examiner, or an instructor rather, I have things that I have already planned out but I like working with clients who come and say, I want to do uh, GPS navigation, I want to do aircraft systems in this particular airplane, and I want to review airspace, whatever it happens to be. I love working with that type of client because they've come with a ready-made menu that we can work from. So it's going to be a combination of topics I've selected that the system wants us to check in on, and also that you as a pilot would like to, to talk about. I sometimes tell my clients, the nervous ones especially, this is an amnesty period. You can come to me kind of like the confessional booth and say, okay, I've never understood adverse yaw. Well, let's go figure that out. You can't fail it. This is a chance for us to show you something. So I like it when we have a discussion and out of that will come a written plan. I always have a written plan and I encourage you to pick instructors that do that. It's a contract. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go over these topics, ground and flight, and afterwards you get a copy of it so you can show this is what we went over it's what we reviewed so the sort of topics that I always do in my flight reviews airspace very important weather how we get weather uh, increasingly important because it's no longer simply calling up the 1-800 weather brief we have an infinite amount of weather information around us from the internet from our phones from just looking outside from the radio how do we sort through all of that so that's a pretty important topic uh, temporary flight restrictions, increasingly important because they are 
more frequent, they take up more volume of airspace, and the consequences are a whole bunch worse if we get into them. We want to talk about where they're likely to occur, how to find out about them, how to avoid them. Medical is an important thing in your aviation medical and physiology, especially as pilots get older, take medications, that can have an implication on your pilot certificate. For example, if you have a physician, your general practitioner prescribes this drug for a condition, have them call your aviation medical examiner and say, maybe there is, is this okay for pilots or maybe there's an alternative? Those sorts of things. So medical I like to check in on. Um, general aviation security. So taking care at the airport to make sure that gates are locked, aircraft are locked and door are covered up. Asking questions of people that don't seem to be quite right. So we're all a part of the, the security here at our airport. I teach our, my clients how to do the same. Those are the ground topics. Flight topics range all over the place, but something I always include is attitude reference flight. You can't have enough hood time. Even if you're not an instrument pilot, nighttime, over a thick cloud underneath you. These are all instrument conditions. They're interesting in theory, but I test all of my BFR, or excuse me, my flight review clients to make sure that they're proficient in attitude reference flight, and that all comes from a flight plan that we prepare in advance. What do you bring to the flight review? Well, your logbook, pretty important, and your pilot certificate. I'm going to review that and go through here, especially if I haven't flown with you before. I'm going to make sure that all your endorsements are correct. What if you have in here, yep, this guy knows how to fly a high-performance airplane. That's not a properly worded high-performance endorsement. I'm going to make sure everything's all in order. If I've been flying with someone for a while, hopefully I've done it correctly. But if I get a pilot I've not flown with before, I go back through here. Make sure everything's all in order. Make sure you're logging your night time correctly. Make sure you know the difference between takeoffs and landings and how we log that. Legible entries for instrument approaches. So a logbook review is very important, as is a certificate review. I want to make sure all the correct information is on your certificate. There are no mistakes that may have come when it was issued. If you're an aircraft owner, likewise bring the logbooks. If I've never seen your airplane before, I'm going to check to make sure it's airworthy to my satisfaction. Perhaps I might find some things in there that you need to catch and update. Again, this is checking in. This is making sure all the documents, everything's in order for the safe execution of the flight. And then finally, bring your flight bag. Bring everything you normally fly with. There's nothing special about the flight review. You're just showing up at the airport and flying with an instructor who's going to watch how you do it. We're going to make sure it's all correct. We might give you some advice. We'll answer your questions, but whatever you bring, is what you're going to fly with on a regular day. So if you're going to fly with a tablet, which is a wonderful thing to do, I'm going to test to make sure you know how to use that. Show me how to get the weather. Show me how to do the difference between an en route chart or a VFR chart. What does that symbol over there mean? I'm going to test you as you fly. That's what you should get out of a good flight review. Remember, it's your chance to show your skills. It's our chance to make sure that you're still proficient and you're still safe. Don't fear the flight review. It's a great opportunity.